You're fired. All right. We're going. So I got today the the pastor. Arch prophet. The arch prophet yeah. of Comedy Church. I'm no bullshit pastor. Adam Browd. Yes. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. Man, if you can get me fired from my congregation, that'll be the Dude, that would be <laughs> that would be very fun. Maybe you convert me to God and that's how. That'd be fun. That would be. <laughs> like he makes some good points. I, I like. I don't think I can run this. I'm I no like what he did. It was like after he told me what God did with AIDS in the nineties, I was convinced. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um, and then we'll try to angle it a little bit so we get so it's not just side profile because at show. least I don't know how it's for you, but for me, my side profile is very bad. Yeah. I, my episode with Max, I was like this the mm. whole time. Then when I looked at the video. Yeah. It was not good. It just ends up with shark fin the whole Yeah, time. but Chuck took it too far. I had Chuck Fury on. And he was, yeah, he just <laughs> not even talking into the mic. Just <laughs> It just looks like a hostage situation. Just well, okay, just making sure the audio is working. Dope. I get paranoid like five minutes into every episode. I just look down. I'm like, is it going? That I do. Well, I, I texted a sister about Adderall, but I, I mean, to like a I was amount. doing Adderall in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That all prescribed, but it's Mine's prescribed uh, to someone else. But it is weird the conventional wisdom at the time. If a kid can't focus, we'll just give them meth. Yeah, like uh, I'm a lot more weary of like pharmaceuticals than I was like because like I, I mean I think in the early 2000s no one like went against like big pharma like no one like questioned it. Your doctor says take this, it will help. Most people, my doctor said take it, it will yeah. help. I and mean, that's how we have the opioid epidemic yeah. now. I had a lot of – there were a lot of people in my high school that questioned, like, the amount of Adderall. I even wrote a paper about it in high school and stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah, which is funny because I wasn't taking any drugs at all. So to write a <laughs> paper about, like, there's too much Adderall. And people are like, are you on Adderall? I've never tried it. That's um, funny. Yeah. Well, cool. Adderall. Yeah, dude, I uh, don't miss it. I hated the way it made me feel. Really? Hated it. I, I looked like a superhero. I looked for any excuse to not take it. Why? Because it, we, it made me feel like shit. I could no, I couldn't communicate with people. Like what? it made I was very antisocial. Like if I take it, I'm quiet all day. Hmm. I don't talk to anyone. I'm just I am so much the opposite. Dude, I'm living up here. I'm like a school shooter up here when Jesus. it's I, I literally leave my phone upstairs because I can't stop texting people. Really? Oh yeah. And people call me out on it every single time because it's frequently the same. Dude, people. I'm so antisocial in Adderall. Dude, really? in high school, my friends all knew the days I took it and days I didn't. Because the mm. days I didn't, they're like, Oh, Drew's smiling today. He didn't take Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that happens to me a lot of times like the next day. Like I can feel the come down. And all that, but for me, no way. I'm so like hyped and energized, ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. I hate, it. I hate the way it makes me feel. I get bad headaches. It's my favorite that I've taken so far. Really? Yeah. Dude. I mean, I like edibles. Have you thought about trying little, meth? But, uh, have I thought about it? Yeah. Get back to my roots. <laughs> you know? From Medford, Oregon. Uh, I've made that joke to people where I'm like, where if anybody's smoking anything, I'm like, oh, dope. Is that meth? And like, <laughs> no, it's weed. Did you want some? Yeah, that's one of my favorite. <laughs> I only do meth. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Weed is for pussies. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, meth was like so much the drug in Medford. I've seen oh, same so in Spokane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Spokane. I've got a whole bit. Well, we did our drug show for Comedy Church, and I talk about how like I know the smell of meth. <laughs> and how weird that was because I served a Mormon mission and when I was on my mission and I would like bring that up to companions and stuff be like oh this house stinks I'm like it smells like meth and they'd be like how do you know and I'm like because it smells is like is there home. meth in Brazil oh yeah dude so I'm getting all over the place so I may have not been in like sketchy enough places but in mm. Guatemala I think drugs are still like stigmatized yeah like if you uh, in Guatemala if you smoke weed you might as well be smoking meth uh, really? the way people look at you that's yeah, wild. you were a filthy drug addict. Also, they like outlaw tattoos in Guatemala. What? Why? Uh, if you get them, you are a gang member. That's weird. But to be fair, there's not like a culture of people who want tattoos in Guatemala. Yeah. Like it's a very conservative country. Hmm. So like the only people who did get tattoos were gang members. So they're like, we're going to make this illegal. And then if you have it, like you're, you're easier to catch. Like, Yeah. I don't have any tattoos, but now I know that my first one's going to be a tattoo of Guatemala. <laughs> that'd, be 
That'd be fun. <laughs> Just like an outline of the country. Yeah, Guatemalan flag, which will later burn. It's a cool well. flag. Has guns on it. Really? Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Do they have guns there? Like, are people allowed to have guns? Um, I don't know if they're allowed, but <laughs> yeah, they, Brazil's the same way. Guns are like, yeah, they're you're not not easy to get a gun, and yet everybody has one. Dude, in Guatemala, uh, I got pranked. Uh, so I'm in Guatemala City. I'm brand new to this area, and it's the only time I've been in the city. And the city is like crazy, like filled with crime. Mm. And so we go to this guy's house, and my companion takes me in there. I didn't have any American companions, so he was from uh, Nicaragua. And we go in, and he sees me. He's like, "Oh, you American?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "I hate Americans." He's like, I got deported. I lived in Boston for 10 years. I hate Americans. I hate that you deport us. And then he pulled out a gun. Oh, jeez. And then he said, do you like this? Do you like guns? And I was like, I'm American. I love guns. I was like, yeah. Do you like I call this my green card. And then he points at me. Jesus Christ. And says, how about now? Do you like it? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm pissing myself. So you didn't like it? I did not like that. I was not. <laughs> it was very fun until he pointed at me. That's wild. I yeah. had no idea you were a pussy. That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, I'm like school shooters. They love it until the cops point the guns at them. Sure. It's, he pointed it at you. And pointed like, at me. Like it? And Jeez. then pulls the trigger. He has a blank in there. Holy fuck. So it made the noise. Yeah. Of a real gunshot, so but no projector. Thought I thought I was going to, I thought I died. Yeah. I like jumped out of my seat. How could you and not? All there was another companionship there. That much all, more terrifying so if you jumped into it. The other three missionaries die, just died laughing. They died laughing? Yeah, because they set it up. What? Yeah, so my companions, they knew this guy and they like set up the whole thing before. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Because it doesn't take much to just not have a blank in there. <laughs> <by> right? <accident. laughs> That is, jeez. Do you still talk to those guys? Oh, yeah. My companion from there. We're good friends. He's wow. a good, <laughs> good guy. That's crazy. The most I had was someone just asked me, do you like George Bush? And I said, not really. I said, nice. Do you like Obama? <laughs> I was like, I didn't vote, but I would have voted for him, I guess. Yeah. And they're like, hmm, I bet they're going to kill him. And I was like, what? They just, <laughs> they just voted him in. And he was like, doesn't matter. That was it. That was the biggest <laughs> controversy I had in Brazil. <laughs> Do you like George Bush? Oh, dude. Every Guatemalan I met had once lived in the U.S. Really? Uh, I mean, not all of them, but I'd say maybe a In Boston? There's fourth. a ton of Brazilians in Boston as well. A lot. Well, if you notice, so the Latino path to the United States, the whole West Coast is like 90% Mexicans. And then you get to the East Coast, and then you got Puerto Ricans and Cubans and Guatemalans, Central Americans. They Everyone that's not Mexican like goes to the East Coast mm. is what I have noticed. So, yeah. like, all of my – because I know a bunch of people in Guatemala who live in the States now, like, yeah. who are, like, members and stuff, and they all live on the East Coast. Mm. Yeah, all the Brazilians would always be like, you're from America? You ever go to Boston? I got a cousin in Boston. Everybody <laughs> has a cousin in Boston. There's the rare exception that sometimes people have family in Miami instead, but it's okay. almost guaranteed Boston every single time. Wild. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of Boston. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Good chat. Good chat. This has been Let's Get Fight. Yes. Well, speaking of, let's get to the questions here. Please. So uh, these are questions I had asked before, but have you ever been fired from a job? Um, yeah. Laid off, technically. Laid off. Laid off, technically, yeah. Not your current job, though, right? Because uh, I know there was my a last string job, of them. I've had my last two jobs I ended up laid off from. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <clears throat> yeah, my my last job, I was a writer, uh, for for funny commercials basically, and they I was the like I was like the last surviving member of the creative team. Oh, and they laid off their the, whole. This is the place team where you once. were last time you were on the podcast. Yeah, I mean the episode nobody listened to, but right. yeah, well, oh, I didn't. Plans. I thought you were still there. I, I mean, thought I still freelance for them, and I'm okay. basically making the same amount of money as I was when I was working there full time. Crazy. But they laid off everybody. Oh, yeah. Months. Yeah. It's really weird because they're having a bunch of financial issues and stuff like that. And uh, everyone who's in charge of the financial stuff, they're still there. And I'm like, aren't it's you? It's funny how that works. Having the problem. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, whatever. So, yeah, I'm still getting paid. But 
I laid off from that one and then another job that I got laid off from, mm-hmm. uh, which I think, I, yeah, I mentioned this on the podcast where I was like, yeah, so I'll lay out the timeline and then you decide what happened. And the timeline's basically like the quick rundown is uh, my, uh, my wife gave birth to our second child. I tried to use their uh, parental leave policy. I was the first man to do so. They told me they, I couldn't, and then they changed the policy, and then I brought up they had already promised it to me, so they gave it to me, and then I came back, and they fired, be, fired me the next day that I came back. That's crazy. So who knows why? And they, Right after I, you're having a kid? Yeah, and then when I got back, they, uh, they informed me that the reason that I was being let go is because they no longer had a position available for me, but then they filled that exact same position a few months later. So oh. crazy. Interesting. Interesting. What kind of place was that? Uh, it was a SaaS company, software as a service. Okay. Yeah. I thought it just like it was a very sassy company. A little sassy. <laughs> Filled with so, sass. They're so silly, just firing me after I have a kid and making me move across the entire country for them. It's, it's so sassy. Oh, that wasn't even that wasn't in Utah. They yeah they recruit well they recruited me to come back to Utah. Okay. And then uh yeah we'd like bought a house and had a kid and then they're like ah eh, get out of here. That is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And I knew the CEO and stuff. It's nuts. Really? You were yeah. friends? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. We performed together. We haven't performed together since, but I look forward to the day that he and I do improv together, and I get to bring that You did up. improv? Yeah. Okay. I want to bring it up in a in a show sometime. I, I did tell you this before, but hmm. I've never respected improv at all until I met you. You still don't uh, have to respect I, it. I, it's all right. <laughs> I, well, it's cause I did hold the belief that everyone who did it was very unfunny. And then oh, I yeah. met you, and I think you're a very good stand-up. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, but I don't blame before, anybody who hates it. And it's, so much of it is bad, and the, and the bar for getting on stage to do improv is so low. Yeah. And it's so easy to trick yourself to think you're good at improv because you got a couple other people doing it with you at the same time. Yeah. That it's easy to be like, I think I did good, but they didn't do good. Or you're like, hey, guys, did we do good? And everyone's like, of course we did good. Yeah, Whereas yeah. stand up, there's, there's no hiding, right? You yeah, yeah. Like, it's just. <laughs> Man, I died up there. Was it the microphone or <laughs> the stand? Maybe the stool was acting up. Like, what are, what are you supposed to say up there? Yeah. I did have one where I think it was the microphone. Oh, really? Yeah. No, well, you would know if it actually is the microphone, right? I've had Dude, that where it cuts in and out. It cut out right on my first punchline. Oh, jeez. And then someone, like a stage tech, had to come on stage and replace it. Uh, and then they get the new one, and the new one like was really like staticky. Oh, but they just left me with that one. Jeez. And then I had to like do the setup for the first joke all over again because oh. I couldn't just say the punchline because after the stage tech came on, like – there was like a minute between me saying the setup before. Sure. And so they weren't going to remember if I just said the punchline. So I had to like re say the joke. That could have been fun though. It ruined the momentum. The and people are like, what? And you're like, should have been there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then like I went to my next joke. My next joke was uh, I met a vet today by vet. I mean, the kind that helps animals, not the yeah, homeless yeah, kind. Yeah. yeah. And it was like a crowd of like older men who oh. were like wearing Vietnam hats and they booed. Really? <laughs> yeah, they booed. What? Man, I am bewildered by the type of person who won't laugh at jokes about themselves. I oh. mean, obviously there's like a level to anything, but something like that. Like yeah. The whole point is that it's like, look how, I mean, the underlying joke Any, is like, we treat vets shitty and this is the yeah, circumstances they have. Anyone under the age of 40 who's been in the military that I've told that joke to dies. Yeah. Like, they laugh harder than anyone. Of course. But uh, vets in a certain age range, yeah. uh, they do not appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Don't ask, don't tell about homelessness is basically what <laughs> Especially Vietnam ones. You think they didn't know all about yeah. homelessness. I feel like that's like, yeah, top 10 homeless people that I see is Vietnam. Man, <laughs> for sure. That's a fun one, but that's going to die out soon. What? In the next oh, seen, 10 like years or so. Yeah, Vietnam literally die Vietnam. out. Like that's, right. We're right. not going to see homeless Vietnam vets sometime. Yeah. I mean, the Viet Cong's tried to help us out with that as well. But, yeah. You know? Finish they did not. <laughs> Oh, fun stuff. So you got fired. Um, yeah. What's the worst job you've ever done? The worst job worst job I've ever had? Yeah. Yeah, worst job you ever had. The worst job I ever had was easily uh, – I was a breakfast server at a Marriott hotel. Fun. And uh, no, that's the exact opposite of what I'm saying right now. Uh, 
And it was terrible because people go to a hotel and they expect that they have a breakfast. Mm -hmm. This one, we charged everyone for the breakfast. <laughs> so basically, my job was waking up at 4.30 in the morning, getting everything ready by 5 to argue with people at 5 o'clock as they, from 5 o'clock until 11, told me that they should have a comped breakfast. And I was like, we don't do comped breakfast. And then people would finally get breakfast anyway because they're hungry. But all the all the breakfast stuff, they they do things like order just two eggs, which was a buck twenty, and they would tip me like ten cents off of it. So I would just at least they tipped. To, yeah, but it felt spiteful to tip someone <laughs> ten cents <laughs> as I'm like eighteen years old trying to explain like I'm so sorry, it's five a.m. You don't have comp. We don't do that. And then like here's ten cents for your trouble. That sounds awful. It was awful. Um, Utah. Worst tippers in the country. Really? That's like legit? Like by stats I've, or just I've, your experience? Well, I looked it up once and yeah. the top five uh, worst. That's crazy. But also, I assumed because like Amanda drove for DoorDash a little bit in Spokane mm. to make extra money. Yeah. And it would be nice. Sometimes she'd make like $20, $25 an hour doing it. Nice. Um, do it here in Utah. Yeah, you're lucky to make $12 an hour. That's wild. Because you live and die off of tips. And the vast majority of people who order DoorDash in Utah County don't tip. Weird. I'd say 20% tip. Mm. And then they'll tip like $1. Dang. I, my minimum is always 20%. It doesn't yeah. matter like what's happening. I just always well, give 20 I've never if understood not more, that. coffee shops and stuff, it's always just two bucks. Yeah. I've never – if I go to like a fast food restaurant, they just flip the iPad over. Yeah. And they're not like waiting me. Like I give $1. Oh, yeah. But like if it's like wait staff, yeah. then it's different. And if it's delivery, I've never ordered a pizza and thought I'm not going to tip the delivery driver. Yeah, and I thought the same me. would apply to DoorDash, but sure. they don't. Jeez. Yeah. I heard some people that they don't because they're like, oh, it's got surcharges and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, that's Yeah, but it doesn't go to the driver. Matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want to live in a world where you can push a button and get Taco Bell at your door, like expect yeah. to and pay more for it. I've heard people say like, well, I paid extra for the delivery. Yeah. So I get it. Lame. But it's uh yeah, a terrible excuse. I and one time had a had a little gift card thing that was like a credit card mm -hmm. gift card. But for some reason it wouldn't work anywhere. I tried it everywhere. Really? Yeah. And it had like uh thirty bucks on it. So it wasn't uh -huh. like a ton, but I mean thirty bucks. Yeah. So I took it to a coffee place and the lady swiped it and uh, it worked. It was like $4 coffee or something like that. Right? Uh -huh. And so I just told her, I was like, hey, um, it had 30 bucks on it. You can just swipe it for the rest and just take the tip. And she was like, a $26 tip? I'm like, yeah, it's not working anywhere and this thing's fucking annoying, to be honest. And she was like, thank you so much. And I was like, no, no, no. I don't want it. Like, you can have it. And I don't know what was going through my like, mind. This is not was, from the goodness of my heart. Like this was, is. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, kind of pissy about yeah, it. Yeah, don't where, think I'm a good person. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and she literally, she was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, no, 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 no. I just had it for a while, and I just don't want it. She's like, well, this is really nice. I'm like, no, did it work? Like, I asked her two more times. Like, I was kind of pissy. Where I was like, it worked, right? Is it still working? <laughs> I need you to just check the tip. Like, I was so anxious to get rid of this thing. And, uh, and then it wasn't until like 20 minutes later I got to work and I was like, I was kind of an asshole when I was tipping that waitress 20 bucks or whatever. Jeez. So that was funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, they probably didn't think you were an asshole. They no, were probably I, like, the nicest guy came in today. <laughs> the nicest douchebag <laughs> just gave me a $26 tip. I hope it at least like balanced out. Uh -huh. she was where she's like, huh, this is kind of a net neutral interaction. Yeah. Yeah. Also, going back on tipping, right now I'm driving for Uber like oh, full time. Right, right. And, um, yeah, most people don't tip their Uber driver. Really? Yeah. This is so – man, people are idiots. The most I made in tips anywhere – I used to work at Cold Stone Creamery. It was, like, oh, my really? first legit job. And we made so much money there. There was a while that they kept scheduling me – and they, they just shouldn't have done this, but they kept scheduling me to work Fridays from 5 p.m. until, like, 7.30 p.m. by myself, which is, like, a pretty busy yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, that's – Prime time. In that time, people not only were tipping because it's prime time, but they were also tipping because they felt bad that I was the only one there. And they were always like, it's just you. And I was like, it's just me. <laughs> and they're like, dude, for your troubles, you got to tell them to get more people. And I'm like, I try. And they just say, work harder. Like, it was so, <laughs> I milked it. And I was making 100 bucks an hour during those like two hours. Really? There. Oh, yeah. As like a 16-year-old kid. Dude. So how did you leave? Did you get fired or – 
Uh, no, I should have gotten fired from that job. I stole so much shit from that place. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You stole? Oh, constantly. Like ice cream or the like? Literal tubs of ice cream. Literal tubs of Dude, ice cream. I believe someone else was on this podcast and worked at Cold me. Stone. I I told you Maybe it was you. It was just me. Stealing tubs of ice cream. Tubs of ice oh, cream. Oh, yeah, no, it was Will Mirswell. He worked at a sandwich shop and they oh, would yeah. just steal like loaves of bread. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well, it was so weird because we were all teenagers because it didn't register as stealing. It wasn't as if I was like, I'm going to steal a shit ton of ice cream. I'm going to make uh-huh. myself, like, give myself diabetes or whatever. Like, I just took it because I was like, yeah, I work here. This is – I'm like a part owner basically. You're already like a communist in high school. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, this is my labor, my- so therefore I own it, right? That was literally – and everyone there who worked there had the same thoughts, and the owners never came in, and the manager was like uh, – she was uh, doing time theft the whole time where she was saying she was working, but she never came uh-huh. in. So it was just a bunch of kids running the store. So I was a theater kid in high school. And so what I did is um, we would have, yeah, when we would have plays, we would deck out our, like, uh, dressing rooms. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we did is we would make, like, a milkshake and smoothie station or whatever. And I was in charge of bringing the ice cream. So I would literally take a big old cold stone thing of ice cream, which they told us one time how much it was worth. I think it was, like, five or six hundred bucks. Damn, cold stone's good, too. It's It's so good to get a full-ass milkshake out of it. Delicious. So, yeah, I would just steal these tubs and bring them in. It was great. Anytime I'd go to the movies as well, I would just go into Cold Stone and walk into the, f- the fridge, take a bunch of candy, and then go walk into the movie theater. Really? And everyone knew that everybody did this, and I'd walk in and I'd grab them. I'm like, hey, just taking some candy. And they're like, oh, yay. Dude, <laughs> no one cared. That's so cool. Was, <laughs> I've never. It was so fun. Yeah, dude. I don't think I've ever taken anything from a job. Oh, really? Like ever. But I never like the only like industry type job like that. I mm. ever had was uh, a dishwasher at a restaurant. Oh. So like I didn't like well I didn't steal a fork. Yeah. Like, or like a big old pan of hash browns or something. Yeah. Like, who wants that? So yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. it was Most a of those weird. Places will feed you. Like when I was a server, dude. We just got they like give me a ten percent discount. Oh, they wouldn't give you like a meal while you were no, there. No, dude. It was crap. It was oh, like actually, it was like Marriott a... was the same way. We got twenty percent <laughs> off, but everyone was just like, just fucking take a plate. Like everyone was just like. Take one plate of food. Yeah. Don't overdo it. Don't take anything that's about to go out, but just like. Dude, yeah, no, they give us nothing. Like, so I would order. Stupid. I like French dip. So I like ordered a French dip to go and going home. And they were like, all right, that's $12. I'm like, damn. Like, what? And the customers are paying, what, like 13 Like, it wasn't. Jeez. So at, Col- at Cold Stone, um, under one of the owners, we got five dollars every time we worked that we could spend on whatever treats or whatever oh nice basically is how it works so we could take five dollars worth of stuff could you like stack it like not no. take anything and then next no. shift you have ten dollars but you could count it towards something so i had a buddy who he would take home an ultimate bucket is what it was called mm-hmm. so the we had a 50 percent off di- employee discount so it was 10 bucks and then he'd use his five bucks for it so he was getting a 20 dollar tub of ice cream for five bucks it was great but anyway so this one, so this one time, they had all of us come in on Saturday and clean the whole entire place. And the girl they had clean the freezer. I thought this was so messed up. They had the girl clean the freezer, which is like negative forty or something like that, forty five. Mm-hmm. She goes in there, she cleans the whole thing. She's freezing. She comes out, and they're like, "Are you done?" She was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Okay, can we talk to you?" And they fire her what? right after clean the whole kitchen or the whole uh, freezer. Yeah, and I. I think about this girl all the time and how much respect I have for her. She was sobbing about having been fired from her job, and she went over. She pulled out a pint of ice cream because it cost five bucks, put it on the slab, and, like, while sobbing, made herself her $5 worth of ice cream and mixed it together, <laughs> put it back in the pint, and, like, walked Dude, out. Dude, that, like, that is the saddest story I've ever heard. All of us were like, Christine is fucking rad. Dude, That's very cool to dude, do that. Oz was on this podcast and told oh, really? me how his wife talked him out of his hopes and dreams. Oh, and that story no. was sadder than what Oz told no. me. Like that. No, it was great. It felt very baller because all the the owners were like, "Wait, didn't you just fire her?" Because there were two of them, and they're like, "I did just fired her." And like, what was she doing? Well, we told her she could have five dollars worth of ice cream, and I think she really wants it. I guess. So it was just like for her to twist the knife back to them. I thought it was. I don't know. Was she bad? Was she like not a good employee? Or none of us were good employees. We were a bunch of teenagers. Yeah, yeah. No one was better than anybody else. We were all all awful people (laughs) working at this place who didn't know it because we were teenagers. That's fun. Yeah, I used to put on like, 
uh, prog rock way too loud while working there and like we'd soap down the floors so that uh-huh. we could slide out to greet all the customers and stuff <laughs> and yeah we were just we, it was fun i mean not anarchy because it wasn't anything crazy, yeah yeah but we'd freeze washcloths and we would play frisbee with them while we were working and stuff that's fun it was great dude so what's your favorite job is that your favorite um i mean honestly this last job i had writing funny stuff was fun just because it was yeah. like an, i mean it wasn't pure comedy but an extension of it uh, i also worked at a residential treatment center which that's controversial um, but ours was ours. Ours wasn't like a crazy one. We didn't sexually abuse kids the way Paris Hilton had at her place, which is crazy. Oh. Have you heard that whole story? That's, uh, you, that's local. Yeah, that's uh, like right down the street from here. Yeah, it's not far right? at all. Right? Like uh, I, 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 I know bits and pieces. So ours was pretty chill. Ours this is a sad thing. Hmm. Um, when so I worked for Comcast, oh, okay. and when I moved to. Utah I was still working for Comcast but working remotely and there was this girl in my group who was like oh you're where are you moving to I was like Orem and she's like oh I lived in Orem mm. and I was like oh cool and she's like yeah at this and she like named the facility oh shoot and she's like yeah you're like they're pretty famous for like their abuse <laughs> well even I remember when I accidentally hit something so I apologize but I remember even when I was working at Telos we would talk about that other place where it was like, oh, yeah, that's where, like, things are really intense. I didn't know about abuse necessarily, but I knew that it was an intense place to be. Ours was just a bunch of kids who had anxiety, light, yeah. light autism, things like that. Yeah. And most of my job was just literally playing basketball and telling kids why they shouldn't say, like, every time they, they miss shooting a basket, they shouldn't be like, pussy fart. <laughs> so that's not socially appropriate. <laughs> sort of thing. So it was a very cool job. Dude, I would just be having them say that all day. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's why you don't, didn't work there. No, I would, yeah, it was It was literally just like skateboarding and uh, playing basketball and like teaching kids life lessons throughout yeah. the day. It was so fun. I loved it. Autistic kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I still stay in contact with some of them. If only they weren't vaccinated. Ah, if only they, weirdly, a lot of the autistic kids who were there, they all had like, really old parents really and i always mean to look that up if that's an actual statistical thing like if it if it informs that or whatever but yeah i uh, think I it does that. but we shouldn't get rid of it you sh- because vax because uh, autism is very fun okay. and it stops polio it's so fun. autism it's the trade-off yeah what do you want to be autistic or do you want polio yes. like i'm not saying like I'm not gonna say that vaccines don't cause autism, but like they probably they, I will say that I they probably do cause autism, autism but we should keep them. That's my stance. Yeah. That's my hot think, take. I we should keep them. Did, we should absolutely keep them. My thing was whether or not having older parents increases the rate of autism. Oh really? Older I, parents? I have no idea. I have no idea. I want to look it up because literally every kid who was on the autism spectrum, their parents would come to visit, and I was like, "Your grandparents are here," and they'd have to be like my parents oh like, damn geez. it got to the point that i could guess it yeah if dude, there if was you're a kid pushing... on autism i was like on autism if there was a kid who was autistic i'd be like <laughs> how old are your parents by the way and they'd always be like oh they're pretty old actually yeah if you're pushing a baby out like at 45 yeah. then we're older even some of them it's crazy jeez that's nuts yeah i mean i could also see it as it's like well maybe older parents when they have maybe they've just got more money so that if their kid is autistic they can send them to a place like that so there's other yeah. possible explanations for you it. You hear that, it Amanda? Appears. Amanda's 25, and sometimes she's like, it's almost too late for me to have kids. I'm like, <laughs> Jeez. Most people get married at like 30, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Not in Utah. Not in Utah. I mean, we didn't get married in Utah. We were yeah. in Washington, but still. Yeah, yeah. Actually, no one thought we were that young. I was 27. Oh. So. Amanda's 25? Yeah. How old are you? Well, I'm 30 now. You're so. 30, okay. But Amanda turns 26. We're four years apart. Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. But also, she was very old for her grade, and I was very young for my grade. Hmm. So school-wise, we're actually six grades apart, but we're four years apart in age. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, because she was held back a year, oh. and then like I was kind of moved forward a year. Mm. Yeah. So you like him young and dumb, huh? Yeah, there. <laughs> she didn't know better. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. <laughs> she always says. Nice. Uh, fun stuff. So what's – the worst thing you've ever done on the clock the most fireable offense you asked me this before and i didn't have any good answer because i know you say everybody says masturbate yeah that is the most common answer 
And I mean, honestly, it would probably be stealing thousands of dollars worth <laughs> of ice cream. cream. <laughs> Literally thousands of dollars. And the worst part was they didn't know about it. And the second group of owners we had, they were so nice that when I left that job, wow. they uh, they liked me so much that they gave me like another hundred bucks as I walked out the door. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they didn't know. Didn't know. Now they know. Now they no, know. they're not going to hear this. Know. But I also tried to look up look up uh, pornography on the computer there. Oh That's really? Okay. That's did. a fireball. That's very fireable. Oh, easily fireable. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was sixteen, I was like, I'm not going to do this at home, and uh, people, do it at work. But and and I uh, I felt bad because because I I didn't delete. I don't think I knew how to delete like the search autofill sort uh-huh. of thing, and so later everybody had mentioned they were like, Did you hear? There's like pornography that someone looked up and i was like oh that's crazy what a terrible thing <laughs> and then everyone all were like it's obvious who it is and i'm like is it and they're like it's the owner's son right <laughs> who also kind of worked there and they're like it's the owner's son and i was like who's to say who's to say so maybe that would be another thing probably that one that's very funny yeah um well let's get into like the real questions here that aren't talking about your job history okay um so starting off, what's your favorite genocide? My favorite genocide. Uh, let's kick it classic. Let's go straight from the Bible. The Philistines. The Philistines. Fuck, oh, was that? Were they genocided? Philist- Philistines. They were. Yeah. Gen- they had Goliath, and they got genocided. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Or maybe Am- Ammonites. Maybe that's another one as well. Jephthah. Oh, let's choose that one actually. I choose. I choose. Do you know the story of Jephthah? No, no. Here's a nice Bible story for you guys. Okay, let's go. Story of Jephthah goes like this: uh, Jephthah was a judge, uh-huh. and he told God, he was like, "Hey, if you let me commit genocide on the Ammonites, I when I get home from war, I will sacrifice the first thing I see." And God was like, "Jephthah, you had me at genocide," and so <laughs> he 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 did it. He left. He came back. He uh, and when he came back, the first thing he saw wasn't a sheep or a goat or anything like that. It was his daughter, dude. And, sick. And it becomes very much similar to like Abraham and Isaac type stuff, where he took his daughter, was going to burn her alive, but then God didn't do anything. Actually, he was like, "Nice, <laughs> burn, baby, burn, save the boys." Fucked and bitches sort of attitude from God. He let him burn his daughter alive, dude. And uh, yeah, so that was, yeah, that was the if end any you, of the Ammonite, if any genocide. one of you is on the fence about religion, just remember <laughs> God is for the boys, and <laughs> Jesus. It's Heavenly Father. And that's why I still yeah. go to church so, for the boys. It's for the boys, <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so insane. Uh, at the tail end of my faith, I used to bring up that story when people would bring up Abraham and Isaac, because a lot of Christians will be like, see. God stopped it because he's not actually going to have you do something that's more than you can actually have faith to fulfill. And I'm like, but what about Jephthah? He had faith enough to fulfill. Dude, that's so fun. It's crazy, right? He genocided. Oh, yeah. Plus one. And one. <laughs> Genocide and one <laughs> scenario. So yeah. if, like, Hitler just had to kill a family member, yeah, he could have done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call it clean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Jephthah, so Paul later in like the New Testament, uh-huh. he even mentions Jephthah. He makes this list of like who the most faithful men were in the scriptures, and Jephthah's towards the top. He's like, this guy didn't fuck around. Like Jephthah's, <laughs> Jephthah's rad. Very faithful. Yeah. So even if you're just like, hey, I only like the New Testament shit. Like, sorry, <laughs> it's in there too. It's that's in there funny. Too. So yeah, Ammonites, classic genocide. Dude, that's a yeah. I did not think we'd go biblical for the genocide. Yeah. I was I was expecting Armenian. <laughs> that was. <what> I, <laughs> no. You seemed like a fan of the Armenian genocide. Uh, no, Armenians aren't the Kardashians Armenians. I don't know. I've seen the Ray J special too many times to be upset with Armenians. Yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fun. Uh, yeah, I was. Max was on this podcast, and he was rifting that there's never been a successful genocide. Oh, like, like no one's ever gotten. gotten they never. Them all. They, no one. No one ever <laughs> oh, gotten them all. 
No one Pokemon it. Well, that's good. Was he saying that optimistically? Because depending on his no. <laughs> no, I think it was more like no one can do it. No one. Isn't it a shame? Just waiting for someone to actually do it. Just one video gamer who's a completionist. Yeah, dude, we do don't. Know. Yeah. And get we old. haven't had a completionist dictator yet. We'll walk out with all the gold, with all the medals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe the Michael Jordan of genocider <laughs> still hasn't come. Jeez. Jeez, dude. Yeah, Ammonites. Really? Sorry, guys. Dude, you know what? Uh, in Guata- Guatemala, there was a uh, genocide. Everybody's and got one, right? Everyone has one. Everybody's got it one. It was especially messed up because it was funded by the U.S. Oh. Yeah, we funded it. I mean, and surprising? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> no, they, they deserved it. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. That's not the surprising direction I took. That's taxpayer dollars well spent. Yeah. Uh, that's... No, it was uh, horrific. Yeah. I met so many people. Dude, people in Guatemala are very desensitized to, like, death and murder because oh, really? of it. Because it's constant. Oh, because right now, like, gangs run Guatemala City. Like, Fuck. dude, I knew a missionary. He saw a lady get beheaded in the street by the gang. Oh, my God. Because she didn't pay her uh, war tax. That's what they called it. Oh, my God. Because the gangs would tax all the local businesses Ugh. for protection. That's so sad. And so then if they didn't pay it, they would get killed yeah. and so the lady she got beheaded in the middle of the street with a machete and for that reason not my favorite not my <laughs> not favorite. your favorite not my favorite yeah no they're uh they're they go they're hardcore in guatemala they don't play around that is uh, insane but yeah dude i knew a dude who like who i taught uh he was kidnapped by the government mm. when he was 18 uh taken out of bed in the middle of the night Damn. and forced into the army and then the army killed half a million people. Oh my goodness. But like while he was in the military, they like forced him to eat raw dog. What? Yeah. Raw dog. Like they shot a dog and they're like, that's dinner. Jeez. And raw so dog, they raw dog's usually better than that. <laughs> raw dog's usually nice. So yeah. Fun. Um, the I'm so glad I didn't see this. So I went into an area in Brazil who when the first day I showed up, people were like you guys here yesterday and they're like no we had a transfer so i just got here and they're like oh you're lucky you weren't here yesterday i'm like how come and they're like well so and so was walking around the whole neighborhood apparently he beheaded his wife and put her head into a bag and everybody was walking up to him he would pull it out and show it to him <laughs> and i was like yeah i guess good thing we weren't here on tuesday glad i got here wednesday dude it sounds funny it was That's insane <laughs> it was a weird thing they literally said he was kind of like hey sort of deal like he was fucking nuts about it I mean, I don't know if that there's a normal way you can do that, I guess. Dude, that is... But, yeah, crazy, right? That is the funniest way to kill your wife. <laughs> that is... <laughs> I'm not saying that's good. That's not moral. Well, no. you did it awful. It that bad. is awful. It's bad. It's but really fucking weird. it is funny. <laughs> like, <and that's... laughs> Ugh, I'm so glad I did not have to see it. It would have been horrific. Yeah, dude. Bad. First time I ever saw a dead body not in a coffin was uh, in Guatemala. Really? Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen a dead body. First, my first movie. Christmas there. Uh, Christmas? Yeah, dude. So, so I don't you know if Brazil's like this. As a, as a present? Uh, <laughs> but, like, they light off fireworks. Like, is Christmas a party in Brazil? Oh, yeah. Because it is in Guatemala. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a party. Yeah. So fireworks are going off all night and day. We're in someone's house. We hear, like, right outside the front door, boom, 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 and we thought fireworks Mm. and then we leave like 30 minutes later and there's a crowd outside the door and there's a body right in the middle street holy yeah first time it was crazy oh i did see a dead body in brazil that's right it was in like the middle of the city too at least i'm pretty sure the person was dead but there was no indication as to how they died oh homeless i don't think so so i don't know but they certainly seem dead they don't have yeah i don't know do they have homeless in brazil oh yeah oh really yeah. So Guatemala, they don't have home. They have drunkards who like have shanties. Oh, that's true. But they'll it's more like that. I it's guess. like they'll walk home from the bar and pass out on the side of the road. Yeah, it's a that's... lot more of that. It's pretty easy to have some form of house because most people there build yeah. their own houses with like bricks and stuff. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, dude, we would like find the drunkards who like passed out on the side of the road in the ditch, and then we would take pictures with them. Uh, holding word of wisdom pamphlets. Oh no, that's very sad. <laughs> that's very sad. Very funny. It was very sad. I got told. Oh, I keep kicking stuff. I got told on my mission that the name Adam Adão in Portuguese. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty early on, when people found out that was my first name, they were like, "That's that's the name of like an old drunkard." 
sort of thing. And I was like, okay, let's calm down. Literally like half of the old drunkards I met on my mission, their names were Adam. Pam, Adam. That was consistent. So at least I at least I know what my trajectory is. You know, I play my cards right. Yeah, you'd be an old drunkard oh, in Brazil. <laughs> Not bad. If you're gonna be anywhere. Yeah, drunkard. was it good? Was it a good place to be as a drunk? Uh, yeah, probably. Because okay. I'd say Guatemala is not a good place to be as a drunk. I think I'd rather be a drunk in Brazil than a drunk here. Really? In the U.S., I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because it's easier to get, like, shelter and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah I and guess food here. food is just growing all over the place there. Yeah. So. I guess that's kind of true yeah. in Guatemala, but. Yeah. Mangoes and bananas for days. Yeah. Mangoes, yeah. I remember... This one place I was at, the mango tree, like the mangoes all fell from the trees at mm. the same time. And then there were so many mangoes, you couldn't eat them all. Yeah. And they're all it. over the ground. And then so they start rotting. Yeah. And then the rotten smell of mangoes was so nasty. You couldn't mm. like walk on the side of the road without stepping in rotten mangoes the uh, whole time. Yeah. You got to get rid of them because at least in Brazil, you get flies. And then as mm. soon as you get flies, you get like frogs and stuff. Yeah, you get that's, frogs. You dude. get you get tarantulas and spiders that like hatch their babies out of the frogs and shit. It was what? nuts, dude. It was like the plagues down there, it dude. That's crazy. so fun. Yeah, same in Guatemala. The tarantulas and the frogs. And yeah, we had uh, in this one area. It was tarantulas the size of my hand, literally. And I remember one time there was one who crossed the street in front of us, and I was like, "Geez!" Uh, and it started going into this house, trying to get into through this door. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "That's scary," but they're not like poisonous or anything, right? And the guy I was with was like. Those will kill you. I'm yeah. Like, really? They're, they're like, yeah, one bite. And I was like, well, then. And so I was like, we got to do something. So we grabbed these bricks that were on the side of the road. Uh-huh. And we threw it at the tarantula. And we hit it. And they're like crushed and stuff like that. And we're like, job well done. And then I shit you not, the tarantula climbed out of the bricks and continued to move. And I was like, okay. <laughs> no way. It earned it. Like, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. A brick won't kill this thing? Like, what am I Dude, supposed to do? Dude, I stomped on a tarantula once. Yeah. And, like, a million baby spiders came out of it. It was the most horrifying thing. No, thank you. Yeah. Jeez. Like, now there's more of them. That's yeah. <laughs> Multiplied. Yeah. Fun. I didn't think that was a real thing. You kill, like, a giant spider oh, and a ton yeah. of baby spiders come out of it, like, alive, already walking. There's, like, a TikTok of that that someone did once. Probably Australia. That place. Uh, dude. Everyone needs to move away. Yeah. I got attacked by a snake in Guatemala. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Almost stepped on a viper. Jeez. Yeah. And then it lunged at me and we ran away. And uh, then it was like following us. So we started throwing rocks at it, trying to kill it. Spooky. And then uh, some guys riding by on their bike saw it and they pulled, they had machetes like they were holstered. Hmm. <laughs> so they pull out their machetes and then they go after it, trying to kill it. Oh, that's and nice. then it jumped into an irrigation canal and swam away. And I'm like, damn, it's going to come back for us. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I couldn't for like, a week i couldn't like sit still without getting like the chills thinking a so, snake was jumping up on me i'd like to think that that snake was just slowly <laughs> making its way it's slithering utah. its way to utah yeah 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 <laughs> it has not forgotten <laughs> uh ugh, i hate snakes snakes yeah. freak me out so uh what's Indiana jones uh, yeah what's what what's uh your least favorite school shooting my least my least favorite school yeah your shooting? least favorite my What's the one that you don't like the most? That I dislike, that I dislike the most. Yeah. Jeez, I hate that I have to run through them all. In my yeah. head right Sandy now. Hooks, it didn't happen. No, so, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sandy Hook was the first one that came to mind because of all the like, it didn't happen, and the young kids, you know. But then, isn't Virginia Tech? Is that still the top? Is I think that that's still one? number one. But it's but it's also like it's all college kids. So like, who cares? Kid. I right? they're I not still do care. <laughs> There's a lot, but I mean, as much as like the little kids, what was the most? Also, the shooter at Virginia Tech, Asian, breaking stereotypes. Yeah. What That's... was the What was the one that just happened? That was a bunch of kids. Oh, oh, the oh, oh, the Tennessee one, Nashville. Oh, was that one? I was thinking of Uvalde. I think. Oh, oh, yeah, Uvalde. Yeah. yeah Fun yeah. one. That was the one where the cops were too scared to go in. That yeah. was cool. Fuck those guys. <laughs> I mean, least favorite. I think maybe that one. I guess because it happened. With kids, and then also, fuck them cops. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. That police department got... Dude, they can't post anything on social media. I, saw, I found Is their it? accounts. It's very funny, the comments on everything they post. I'm glad they do. Oh, my God. I think about that. When that was happening, I was, I was like, I literally... 
don't know what I would do because I got two kids. I got yeah. two boys. And I'm like, I remember the video of like parents trying to get past them. And the cops are like arresting parents for trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Dude, wild. Like if you're scared to go in, at least be like, sure, you have at it to someone who's oh. willing to. Yeah. Dude, also before that one, uh, a bit I was doing that was probably getting the most laughs hmm. was a bit where I say, like, you ever get like really bad thoughts? Like a bad thought I get sometimes is that whenever I see in the news that there's a school shooting and the shooter only shoots one or two people, I can't help but think I could beat that score. Like that's a really Jeez. low score. Yeah. And then I do a whole thing. I'm like, kids these days, they're not even training anymore. <laughs> like for <Jesus> Christ. <laughs> And uh, like I go all into that. And it, uh, then I I make it more fun where I'm like, I could beat that score with a sword. Like, and then, oh, I remember and I'm like I'd be a really good school sorter. Jeez. And uh, that joke was doing very well. Uvalde happens. Couldn't do it. Not like surprising. the day after, I mean, I did not try it the day after, um, but I tried it like two months after. Cause I was mm. like, maybe it's been long enough that, two months. but whenever I, yeah, dude, I get upset whenever there's a big one because I got to like, all right, I got to retire this one, <laughs> but I haven't done that joke in like a year now. Oh, so yeah. it's not really in my arsenal, but everybody um, still thinks about when there are so many people who, when they try to, when they like mention you, they're like. Yeah, you know Drew, right? And people are like, Drew? And they're like, you know, like, school shooter joke guy? And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of people, that's how they reference Dude, that's it. funny. Because that's the only school shooting joke I have. Yeah, but Which, it sticks. To be fair, it's sticks a, it's a with, silly yeah. joke. It's a silly sticks. joke. Because I'm talking about going into school with a sword. So here's the thing about the sword deal. So I had a buddy who he was working for the Parks and Rec Department in Medford, mm-hmm. Oregon. And he claims while he was driving around with some people, he was bored out of his mind. And there was one girl especially who, like, had... She just was going on and on about everything that they passed and everything they saw, and it was never interesting. And then finally they passed an Albertsons. And the girl goes, oh, I really like Albertsons. It's a really good uh, grocery store, and I think, you know, they've got really good deals there, and they're always got, like, the freshest produce, I think, and it's really nice. And also my aunt worked there for a long time. And every time that we went in and we saw my aunt, like, they'd make sure and give us cookies, you know, up until she finally had a – stopped working there after she got her head chopped off by an angry fellow employee and uh, they still helped my cousin go to college and stuff after i thought that was neat and my buddy was like uh uh-huh, yeah that's true good point and like, fucking what <laughs> and uh yeah apparently there was some dude who had worked there and he came in with a samurai sword on his day off or maybe he had been recently fired i'm not sure but uh something like that he was mentally unwell he came in, all the people in the grocery store tried to fight him off with jars of pickles and ma- of uh, mayonnaise jars and pickle jars. And they were using like trash can lids to try to defend themselves, throwing the stuff at him. He got a couple people with a sword, what? decapitated this lady. And my buddy, he was like telling me all this. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way, dude. And he goes, it's true. Go ahead and Google search. Albertson's beheaded. <laughs> what? Sure enough, the story came up. It was insane. That is. So to your point, yes, a sword it can work. It can work. <laughs> did people do that. Didn't someone do that in like London or something not too long ago? They went. On yeah, because they don't sword. like. Yeah, you can't really get guns yeah. in London. So yeah, they yeah. Did. It was a knife actually. It was a guy. It was guy went on a. Who did it? Was, maybe did, there was a. Because there's been. There's I mean, been so many of them. Yeah, I mean, the thing part. is, uh, in any. Wherever you go with the mental health crisis, yeah. uh, whatever weapons available, you're gonna find it. Sure. I bet you know. I really don't understand. You go to like a remote place. There's probably someone who's throwing giant boulders at people. Yeah. Uh, there's coconut killers. Coconut killers. Stuff like that. <laughs> sure, but again, it's efficient. It's yeah. Horrifying. So yeah, least favorite. Yeah, least favorite. Uvalde. Oh, Uvalde. Okay. Yeah. Number two, Albertsons beheaded. Not a, <laughs> not a school, but it still ranks up there. Yeah, those are fun. No, no <laughs> they're, they're not. not. They're not. They're not. <laughs> horrible, horrific. They're horrible. We live right across the street from an elementary school, and then down the way from a high school. And I do genuinely hate that. I think about this all the time. That I'm, I work from home, mm-hmm. and I'm glad that I work from home and close to those schools. Chances are, I'm not going to be able to do shit. But there have been many times that I think about, like, if my kids are going to school and suddenly there's an alert or any sort of news about there being a yeah. shooting at that school, that I can try to get there before the cops. Which I know there are probably people who are listening. Yeah. They're like, don't get there before the cops. You're gonna no, you get up. there before the cops. But also, I'm like, I... Do you have a gun? 
No. No. I'm, maybe I'll buy one when my kids go to school just because it terrifies me that yeah. of them going to school now. But also, I don't want to show up to a school shooting with a gun and then I'm walking around with a gun and everyone's <laughs> That's like, a bad look. It's yeah, a bad it's look. It's a bad look <laughs> in a bad moment. Uh, so I don't know what I would want to do, but I do know that I would want to get in there. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. And I feel like that's the weird thing about it sometimes. People are like, what are you going to do? The person has a gun. And I'm like, fuck if I know what I'm going to yeah, do, dude. but I'm going to be there. Well, also, like, you don't, yeah. That's what you got to train. You got to, like, practice. Like, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm, like, dead ass serious. Because, like, you defending. never know when you're going to be in, like, a crazy situation. Yeah. Uh, so, like, if you do get a gun, make sure you know how to use it. Sure. And of you're course. responsible. Safe with course, it. Of course, of course. And then, like, if you are in a situation where something like that happens, yeah, uh, the muscle memory can kick in and yeah. you can get the job done. But, like, I feel like if you – like, because my mom carries a gun. Oh, yeah. Um, but she goes to the range once or twice a year. Oh. And I'm like, if something happened, I'm not going to yeah. be trusting gonna her. Be it up. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't, I don't really like guns mostly because, you know, I've had my bouts of depression. And they say, oh, yeah. And they say if you own the gun, the most – if you own a gun, statistically speaking, the most person you're – most likely person you're going to kill is yourself. Yep. You know? And I'm like, I could see that. Uh, that's, probably <laughs> that's probably the most likely scenario. <laughs> Much more likely that there be a school shooting. So, yeah. Anyway, but I am glad whether or not I've got yeah a gun. It's such a weird feeling to be like, at least I know that I can, I guess, run across the street and get shot immediately, most likely. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I would Dude, do. I've been making lots of jokes about killing myself lately, but it's all fun. It's yeah, all fun. It's just a good time. It's a good time. What's, what's wrong yeah, with a little... Do not take my myself. gun away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, there we go. So the least favorite school shooting, Uvalde, Uvalde, which is a shame. You didn't think that's as tragic as Sandy Hook. Uh, that's you. I do hate. You're a bad person. <laughs> is Sandy? I'm trying to remember what was what was the one with the guy who killed all the Amish people as well. That was a crazy oh, dude. One. And then all the Amish oh, people were like standing up for him or whatever. Not standing up for him, but they were like, "We forgive you." I need to go back that's and, to my tapes because I had a joke about that. Really? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I threw that at the end of the school shooting one. Mm. And I was like, it's kind of funny because, like, uh, you know, they went their whole lives without seeing modern technology until. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Drew. No, Drew. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, that's advanced. Well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, fun yeah, stuff. Uvalde. Uvalde. Because the cops okay. were bitches. Oh, yeah, that was a bummer. Yeah. All right. Next question. Uh, who is the greatest black man of all time? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is better be the same answer for everyone. It's very easy. It's Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Because I don't think he was actually divine. Not because he's black. I, a black person can be divine. That's see. Fine. And I, I don't, I don't think he was black. You don't think so? No, I think he was Hispanic. Hispanic. Yes. Because of the name. Have you ever met a Jesus who wasn't Hispanic? <laughs> uh, I've met some black Jesuses, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say Jesus because while I'm not a believer, I'm very impressed that, one, he was able to pull off people being like, your mom had sex with some dude and being like, and that makes me better than you, actually. Like, that's pretty cool <laughs> to begin with. And then uh, he turned close-up magic into a religion, and that's dope as well. So, yeah. Ooh, lost my hat. So I would say Jesus. Greatest black man ever. Not Martin Luther King. No. Not not even Martin in the Luther same. Martin Luther King Jr. is a fan not of Malcolm Jesus. X. Not Malcolm X is pretty fucking. He was not right. a fan of Jesus. Malcolm X. Oh well, yeah, he was. Yeah. Muslim. Well, he was Muslim. no Muslims. Well, like yeah, Jesus. Is, yeah, they He's do like Jesus. Yeah, yeah he was wasn't. Fan. Okay, never He's mind. A fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that was a, that was a bad take. I take that back. I forgot. <laughs> Took us a while to get. I've read it. I've read the Good Word. Yeah, they do like Jesus. Have you read the Quran? No. Nice, gotcha. I'm not good at reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Not that I'm against reading it. I'd like to. The but then when I like, I'm like, I could read the Quran or I could play PlayStation right now. Yeah. How am I going to spend my time? Yeah. they. Someone's making a biblical video game, and I can't remember who it is. Oh, uh, Angel Studios. Yeah, that <laughs> wouldn't be surprised. But the graphics, the little I saw, I was like, that looks decent. Oh really? I'm fascinated by what it'll what the playthrough is like, dude. That would be. 
just all of a sudden you're running through Egypt while like the firstborn is dying around you. Like that would be insane. <laughs> insane. A Bible video game. That's it's a gotta be crazy M concept. M for mature, at least for all the chapters about he knew his wife and who begat who. Like it's gotta be. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. A Book of Mormon video game. That'd be fun. Yeah. They tried to make that movie, right? I was told legit part of the problem was it needed to be at least PG-13 to do it justice. And, they didn't, and a lot of people were like, you can't have it PG-13. That's what I was told. I don't know if it's true. That's wild. Yeah, people didn't want to support what not, God's word. I mean, I get not R, but not PG-13. Yeah, people were like, we don't want God's word to be what it is on screen. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty graphic. Oh, yeah. Super yeah graphic. Especially the end. They're like, the Lamanites were cutting up people and feeding them to their... <laughs> oh, yeah. Or Ammon. That one always yeah. like, got me as a... As a kid, that story of Ammon, for those who don't know, in the Book of Mormon, he chops off a bunch of robbers' arms and then puts them in, like, a, a basket or yeah, something Yeah, as a like kid, that. I was always like, that's the coolest story. Is that how you were, too? As a kid, I was like, oh, I'm supposed that's, to be like this. Yeah. That's good. Very big into capital punishment <laughs> as a kid because really? of that story. I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's I, what I thought. I was like, oh, I was always anti capital punishment, oh, really? but I thought I still thought that was cool. Oh, I thought that was the right way you're supposed well, to. Well, it's because like, that's what yeah. happens to sinners, sort of thing. No, it's, it's just I, into, like, I don't. I don't like when the government kills people, but I like it. You know, when I mean, <laughs> it took me. Into, well, it took me probably until about sixth grade to kind of get into that because that's when I stopped saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, really? Fifth, fifth or sixth grade? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, after that point, but. But before that, I was like, oh, I guess this is the truth. Yeah. People who steal should have their arms cut off. <laughs> God said so. Yeah. I mean, the government shouldn't steal people, but you should stand your ground. <laughs> yeah. Right to bear arms. Nice. Yeah. That's just all I am. And he's an advocate of the Second he's, Amendment. Yeah, that was it. He's bearing arms all over the place. Puts yeah. him in a basket, <laughs> gives him to the king. It was, it was such an insane story. And the, the king that, was like, this dude is the man. Like, this yeah. is <laughs> I think the crazier part about it is because there's scriptures like that. Like I mentioned Jephthah. Uh -huh. I think your average Christian doesn't know the story of Jephthah. People uh -huh. don't talk about it at all. Um, but your average Mormon knows Ammon and is like, stand up guy. Yeah, dude. I really good guy. Knew people. I had people in my stake named Ammon. Oh, of course. And that's all the time. I mean, you've heard my joke about Nephi, right? With at the beginning of where it's like uh, uh, Nephi... Where I'm like, does anybody else think that Nephi was a little too enthusiastic to kill Laban? Because oh, no, God I haven't like, heard that one. Because God was like, hey, you need to kill Laban. And he was like, all right, I'll chop his head off. He's <laughs> like, I didn't specify that. And he's like, I'll chop his head off, put on his clothes, pretend to be him, and walk around for a bit while his closest friends and family members call me by his name. Sounds good. I'm yeah. Like, wow, also, the logistics of that. Yeah. Like, I mean, if I. That out, right? Where yeah, like, like, if I. Uh... Like, if I killed you and put on your shirt, people aren't going to be like, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where it's just like, it was dark. And also fun that Nephi was an impressionist. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that I've thought that so many times. They're like, that's cool. That's like a hidden talent. Yeah. Know about the um, first Book of Mormon prophet. A really funny thing. Amanda and I uh, teach Sunday school. And oh. uh, we're like in the part where like Christ gets arrested in the New Testament. Mm. And like Peter denies him. Yeah. But what's really fun is they're like, oh, he knows him. He's Galilean and like listen to his accent. Yeah. And it's funny. Peter tr actively tries to change his accent. And that image is very fun to that me. Like fun. someone from Alabama who has like a thick Southern accent. Yeah. Like he did it. <laughs> He's yeah. from Alabama. And they're trying to like make it like a California accent. Yeah. And like, <laughs> hey, dude, like what in tarnation do I know that guy from, bro? Yeah, that'd be fun. That was very fun. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I pointed that out to the class. I was like, that's fun. Did people like, love that? A little bit. No, yeah. and that's if I see something funny in what we're teaching, I always try to point it out. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, he changed his voice. His, yeah. Especially since they just heard it. Like, someone was like, listen, he's Galilean. And he's like, what, governor? Nah. <laughs> like, okay, you didn't talk like that a second ago. He's like, no, I don't know this guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, funny stuff. That's, that's funny. funny. Bible, classic comedy. Lots of funny. Um, so greatest black man to ever live. Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Jesus. He did it. I was Still to ended up arrested. My, That's a bummer. Yeah. I think George Floyd. George Floyd. Yeah. The greatest black man? The greatest. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did see someone on the internet, someone got a tattoo of like, the, you know, the George Floyd like mural. Oh, and then below it said the greatest black man to ever live. And I was like, oh, damn. What <laughs> That's in the world? Tragic what happened to him. But like, I mean. Greatest, weird. 
I don't have a ranking. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We should rank them sometime. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on Legion of Skanks, they had an episode called the Bill Cosby Beauty Pageant, oh. uh, where they took all, pictures of all of his victims and ranked them. Jesus Christ. I just had a Bill Cosby joke in my uh, last set. Oh, really? Yeah, where I said people who are all, all out there making all these jokes trying to bring trans people down. I'm just so exhausted of it. And I was like, you're not funny. You're not unique. You're not original. You're not George Carlin. You're Bill Cosby. You're acting like you're, uh, you're actively hurting people while trying to be like, it's just a pudding pop, which is very much so how I feel about <laughs> that whole take of the trans Well, fun. Community. Fun. That was fun. I like that that's your follow up with everything. My fun. You know what? Fun. I do that on stage too. <laughs> After I like to tell a school shooting joke yeah, and I'm like, like fun. <laughs> and then fun. I, it's my transition word. <laughs> Mine's cool. I cool. have that happen a lot in comedy church. After Greg has an impassioned speech or whatever, I'm like, cool. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amanda has critiqued that. She's like, you say fun way too much on stage. Funny. Yeah. But the reason I think, because I used it as like a transition once after saying something probably horrible. And yeah. then I got a good laugh saying fun. Because sure that's a works. crazy. Yeah. I'm sure it's it a crazy well, transition. Yeah. Tell a school shooting joke and it's fun. Makes sense to me. Well. Last question here. Okay. Well, we actually have two more, but what time do we got? It is two fifty. Mm-hmm. So, what would be a more productive office, all men or all women? Um, I think all women. All women, dude. Adam Broad is not for the boys. That's. Uh, <laughs> So I so I did a partial PhD in psychology. So this is uh-huh. evidence based, even evidence based. Evidence based. Dude, don't don't bring your <laughs> evidence in here. Sorry, dude. Ask dude, me I'm not. <laughs> ask me a different question. Dude, man. come on. <laughs> Can't do that. Yeah, companies that have uh, female CEOs and leadership alone, they are able to be more productive and make larger profit margins than those run by men. Yeah, but that's because they have men working for them. Uh, potentially so you need to say women in the workforce. I'm not saying women can't be CEOs. No, but I mean, I'm saying if the it's office. It's weird that you went right to that. Yeah, one. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I like, we're on the same page. I'm saying the CEO, up, the honest. CEO should be a chick, but the office should be for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, women are also rated as more egalitarian and helpful to one another and more collaborative. Yes. Uh, I don't know, man. The stats are in. Ask me a more fun question if you want a more fun answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to put you in a. You think here? Here's your here's your sound clip. Uh, you think women don't know labor? <laughs> That's their whole thing. There you go. There you go. My misogynistic support of women. There you go. I don't mean that. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Um, <laughs> well, fun. Um, <laughs> damn it! Now I'm noticing that I say fun. <laughs> um. So, last question here. Uh, one country that you wipe off the map, the nuke. Uh, I believe last time you said the Vatican. So, let's go. <laughs> yeah, you did say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good answer. So, the Vatican's off the map. Oh, uh, you shit. killed them. So oh, nice. I don't, well, just, and if you pick I a country that's been said on this podcast, I'll tell you. But you sh- mm, I mean, the Vatican's a pretty good answer. God damn it. Smart one. Wow. Other people have tried to take it. And I said, no, Adam Proud took the Vatican. Nice. Uh, what else did I say? What else? I feel like I went through a few. I feel like the other one that I briefly mentioned was Argentina because I lived in Brazil and that's the rivalry. Oh, really? I mentioned that one. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Argentines, they're arrogant. Um, what? They all suck. Has anyone oh. tried to say I'm not going to say it because it's a cop out. Have, have people tried to say Antarctica before, I'm assuming? Yes, anyone? that has happened. That's a pretty big cop out. Yeah, going to kill five scientists. And also, multiple people have said Ukraine. Ukraine, really? Yeah, well, like the U.S. and Russia are fighting over it, so it's get a, you know, it's like when your mom throws away the toy that your brothers are fighting over. <laughs> Damn, Ukraine thing, man. There's a thing I definitely feel like I don't know nearly enough about. Where it's like, yeah, I don't think anybody should kill anybody, and then people are immediately like, then you're on, then you should be on the side of Russia because Ukraine's killing people. I'm like, were they? And then people are like, you should be on Ukraine's side. Because, no, dude, uh, you should be on the side. Uh, I don't want to get serious on this podcast. I hate it. Yeah, like, I'm just on the side of ceasefire. Like, stop yeah, killing. Feels like, like that's... As you ask me which country yeah. to wipe out <laughs> from the war. Oh, jeez. 
Um, yeah, no, like my real opinions on like genocide and war aren't funny. That's, right. That's well, funny. I would hope that we can come together and agree that genocide and war are bad. Um, which place? But on the record, very funny. Dubai. Was Dubai. Dubai. No, no one said Dubai. I'll, I'll go with Dubai. Okay. Yeah, fucking pieces. Dude, of the shit, Middle rich East people. is getting annihilated Do people, people have already had yeah, so, hey I, I, saudi arabia was the last one we got mm, dubai there well it shows our american in- ignorance yeah should I, should I say america and pair it with the flag have people oh, said america everyone yeah you're not allowed to say america oh okay. yeah because america is for the boys <laughs> uh yeah i'd say dubai dubai I don't okay. know enough about Dubai to like commit to it fully, but <laughs> Dubai is off. It's a lot of fucking rich. They're, people. they're all dead. They're all dead. They they use slave labor to build all the soccer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might as well. You can't be yeah. given. You can't be given people jobs. Just joking. Uh, yeah. What are you gonna do? Pick a poor country and put them out of their misery? And you're gonna <laughs> <laughs> just <a> euthanasia. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Dubai. 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 Fun. Step down from the Vatican. God damn it. Vatican's such a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun that you didn't remember that you picked the Vatican. I, didn't at all. I would have sworn I said Argentina before. I could have sworn. No, you did not. Funny. Yeah, you said the Vatican. Cool. Yeah. Argentina might be your next time on if it's still around. What would, even, what would even happen if the Vatican just disappeared? I don't even know how much of the world would change. I mean, what? Only like, what, 200 people would die? Uh, yeah. But it obviously affects so much of the world. But then yeah. they'd just get a new pope, right? Yeah. And there would be like, I mean, a lot of art and history would be destroyed. Have you yeah. been to the Vatican? No. It, I've never been to Europe. Oh, really? No. Oh. Dude, if you go to the Vatican, the tour of like, yeah, they're, it's insane. The tour of their museum. It's literally just like shelves of stuff that's so ancient and precious to so many groups of people that are not white. And they're just like... You got another one of these, just put it on the shelf. Like, Dude. it is stacked with just all sorts of stuff. It's crazy. Dude, the Vatican's cool. <laughs> Vatican's. Did you ever watch a South Park episode where uh, the priest, like, the local priest, like, comes out against, like, uh, priest banging kids? Mm-hmm. And then he goes to the Vatican. I've only ever seen like and, two episodes of South oh, Park. Oh, dude, you should watch South Park. You would love South Park. I definitely need to because twice I've written jokes that people have later been like, that's a South Park joke. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I dude, so know. many. I, I, wrote a, I wrote a joke once that they had done. Yeah. And So that's my least favorite part of stand-up comedy. They, they, I had a retired joke just the other day because someone was like, hey, Pete Holmes has a joke like that. I'm like, shit. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Well... South Park, uh, the local priest, like, goes to the Vatican mm. and then is like, dude, we need to do something about these other priests who are yeah. banging kids. And then uh, he finds out to his horror that he's the only priest in the world who's not fucking kids. Oh, no. <laughs> Such a funny episode. Jeez. Uh, sounds right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. And he's, like, trying to get them to stop doing it. And they're like, Why? we're not going <laughs> to. Jeez. Yeah. Thankfully, I didn't see any of that in the Vatican. But the best gelato I've ever had in my life just down the street really yeah dude the old bridge i want to go to italy so bad italy i was surprised i the when we first went there it wasn't like top of the list it was just a convenience thing Uh literally we were like oh that's the cheapest flight so let's go to rome and then we did didn't love the city necessarily like the atmosphere and culture Mm -hmm. of rome but everything we saw was crazy and then we went to uh, Venice, and Venice is one of my favorite cities. Really, ever. there's nothing, there's no other place like it. And it's just wild, Very dude. Cool. We yeah, still want to go back. That's Florence number one. Number one, for a lot of number one on my list is Italy. Like See, of it places to go. And you can hit so many different cities there that have such different like cultures and flavors all within Italy. Yeah. We, number two, Spain. Spain, Barcelona is my favorite like, city in the world. Places I could care less to visit is like the UK. Oh really? Uh, yeah, I, I, I could care less about going to France. The London's places great. in Europe that Paris interest me, m- the Mediterranean interests me, mm. like Greece, Spain, Italy. I've never been to Greece. I want to real bad. And then uh, Netherlands seems very interesting to me. Amsterdam yeah. looks cool. I was in Amsterdam just for like a day. It was yeah. it was great. I was in Rotterdam for a week and it was fine. But I was mostly just I didn't see a lot of the city. Yeah, Germany seems cool. Um, I've only been in Munich there. Munich was wonderful. Loved it. Dude, I have to check it out. I want to go. I mean, I'm poor, but someday. You can do it. I believe in you. We went when we were poor. I need to get people to listen to this podcast. Yeah, there you go. There. 
so then I can go. Drew has yeah. European dreams. What if you just ended up naming like all the access basically? Because you're like, do we want to go to Germany, Italy? Yeah. <laughs> Every episode, I'm like, send me to Europe. Yeah. Watch. <laughs> I would have liked to go to Japan a few decades ago, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> Wait, something happened in Japan? Uh, in World War Two? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, A couple yeah. things. A couple <laughs> things happened in Japan. In China. Actually, two things happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeez. Anyway. Yeah, well, fun. Well, thank you for being here. I think this is a Dubai. fun episode. Yeah, nope. Dubai is gone. Jesus. I, I saw Quran said Pakistan, right? Yeah, dude, I didn't finish the sentence. He said it's Pakistan. Just, That's why it's so funny. It, it, was, it was so quick. It was a very funny clip. Yeah. To like lean into uh, anyway. all right cool we did it you're fired